modern living rooms work really damn hard. You watch TV in them, you eat in them, you read in them, sometimes you even sleep in them. If they were a person and they worked a job, they would get a promotion every six months because they are just that impressive. But they are not, so instead, let's just design them nicely and give them the love that they deserve. Hi everyone, my name is Bai Xu and I'm a licensed architect. I studied architecture and urban design at the University of Cambridge, but I now realize my real passion is in beautiful home interiors. So here I am making a YouTube channel sharing everything that I know. In this video, I want to go through 10 common design mistakes I see people make again and again in their living rooms. And I'm gonna share some tips and guidance on how to avoid doing them. This might get a little bit controversial at times because I think everyone is guilty of these mistakes. The first mistake I see people make again and again is to have open storage everywhere. It's really easy to love open storage because magazines and books and Instagram have lied to you. These are the pictures that they show us, but this is not the reality. Open storage is not real storage. You don't actually want to store things that you need in these places. It just looks like crap. It looks cluttered, it's going to make you really stressful, and it's just going to accumulate a lot of dust over time. I mean, that's a reason why glasses are behind cabinet doors. So once you actually start putting things onto the shelves, it's going to look like crap. So what I would suggest is to make life easy for yourself, make most of the storage in the living room close behind the door so you can hide things away when you don't need them and only reserve about maybe 20 to 40% as open storage where you can use it to display things that look nice but might not actually be functional. If you already have a lot of open storage and open shelves and you don't want to replace it all, what you can do is maybe try to build some custom cupboards or you can go out and buy a lot of pretty storage boxes and put your things into these boxes instead so they're hidden from view. I think books are the only great thing to use on an open shelf because they have a pretty consistent shape and size and when they're stacked together, they look very neat and kind of make your home look like you are a scholar and you read a lot. If you're a minimalist and you don't have many pieces of furniture or tables in your living room, it might get messy. I think it's inevitable that we have things. We do, we have letters, books, magazines, cups, plants, artwork, I don't know, a, a lot of crap. So you should have side tables next to your armchairs, next to your sofas, coffee tables in the middle of the room, maybe um, cabinets or shelves behind you, places with a flat surface where you can put your items. Otherwise, they just kind of spill everywhere and accumulate on one surface and they'll never look good. Sometimes your coffee table just ends up being a little bit too small and that makes your room look underfurnished. Sometimes it's a little bit too big and that makes your room look tiny. So to avoid making this mistake, you can use the following dimension as guidelines to buy your coffee table. The height of your coffee table is typically around the same level as the seat of your sofa or chair. So you can aim for a height that ranges from about 40 to 46 centimeters as a general rule. The coffee table's length should be about two thirds to three quarters the length of the sofa. And in terms of width, a coffee table should generally be within the same range as the seat depth of your sofa or chairs or even narrower. Leave enough space around the coffee table for comfortable movement and traffic flow. Aim for at least 45 centimeters of clearance between the coffee table and any surrounding furniture or walls. And if you just happen to have a coffee table that's already too small and you really love it and want to hang on to it, maybe you could buy another one and combine them together. I see a lot of people and also in furniture magazines like IKEA where they put a rug that is clearly too small for the sofa. This is a definite no-no. You don't want these floaters in the middle of the room. I call them floaters because they're just kind of floating around in this space and the sofas are not attached to the rug. If the rug is too small, it makes the room look smaller, it cheapens the space, and somehow the seating area just doesn't look as cohesive together because it's not like a real zone. What you want to do is to always make sure that the front legs of the sofas or armchairs are all on the rug. I have another YouTube video where I go through all the dimensions that you would need to buy the perfect size rug, so you can check it out after this video. When you walk into a room and everything 
matches. The sofas, the armchairs, the coffee table, the end table. Ah! Don't do this to your space and don't do this to the people that visit your home. Because when everything is matching, it looks really boring, it looks a bit dated and it looks kind of lazy. Like you literally walked into a furniture shop and you just picked one set of furniture and said, okay, that looks good enough for me. I think your space looks so much more interesting and it has so much more like heart and love. If some of the pieces are not quite matching, like they go well together and they look cohesive together, but they have different textures, colors, layers, wood grains, like you're curating something beautiful instead of something that's just practical and convenient. Think of it as going to a farmer's market and getting a lot of different ingredients to make one beautiful soup versus buying some ready-made canned soup that has everything already made for you. Farmer's market, canned soup. Farmer's market, canned soup. But if you already bought the furniture and it's just one set and it's really good quality, don't throw them away. Maybe you can swap around with some furniture pieces that's in a different room. Or you can add some small decorative items that gives it a little bit of contrast. For example, if every single piece of wood furniture in the living room is dark wood, maybe you can put a nice tablecloth on one of the tables. Ta-da! Now you've hidden it and it looks different and you didn't have to throw away your beautiful furniture. Just an idea. When planning a furniture layout, it's very easy to, by default, just push everything to the edge of the room. But this is not how you should think of furniture placement. It's not about populating the edge of the space. It's more about the relationship of each piece of furniture next to each other. I mean, pushing your furniture out to the walls won't necessarily make a room feel bigger. It will just make the gaps between the furniture larger. So instead of working towards the walls, create conversational seating arrangements. Pull furniture forward into groups that make sense for a connected space. Another mistake people make is that they hang their TV at the wrong height. Design is more than having a home that looks pretty. Ergonomics should also be taken into consideration. Your TV should not be hung so high up that you begin to experience neck pain and you're forced to look up when you want to watch your favorite show. Mm -mm. I spend way too many hours of my life watching Netflix and feeling guilty about it. I'm not also going to torture my body over this. I know that it's a really, really big trend in interior design to hang your TV above the fireplace. And at the moment, it's even a bigger trend to frame your TV and hide it so it doesn't even look like TV, that it looks like a beautiful picture frame. But as soon as you start placing it way high up above the mantle or on the shelf in a really weird location, it no longer becomes useful or practical for you. Your TV should be eye level to where you're sitting. There are definitely better ways of camouflaging your TV in your home if you don't like the look of a TV rather than killing your neck. So here are some of them. First, you can put the TV in a cupboard with doors that you can close and hide it when it's not in use. Or you can paint the wall behind the TV a darker color so the black screen doesn't pop out as much. Or you can just put it in a niche in a built-in wall storage so when you're looking at it from the side, it also blends in a little bit more. Just, you know, make sure it's at eye level. Having furniture that's too small in a room makes your room look underfurnished and having furniture that's too big in your room makes your space feel cramped and uncomfortable and claustrophobic and like you need to upgrade to a bigger house. I think it's much easier just to get the right size furniture than to buy a bigger home. So just make sure that when you buy your coffee table, your sofas, etc, you leave enough clearance space between all the pieces. I have more videos up here that tells you about clearance spaces. So if you're one of the fortunate ones that has a large living room, ensure you leave at least 75 centimeters in the gaps between the furniture and the wall. And if you have a smaller apartment, try to leave at least 45 centimeter gap between the pieces. Another mistake that people have is to have only one light source in the living room. You know the one I mean. The problem with this is that when you switch this on, everyone looks kind of ugly and your room doesn't look cozy at all. And it's also not very functional. It's useful if you need a lot of light so you can find your keys or your missing cat, but it's not very useful when you want to create some romance, some ambience, or have a very specific function light to light up some wall art or to read your book. So what you should do is 
is to aim for about five to seven different light sources in a room at varying heights and in varying zones. So for example, you can have one big overhead light, that's your one source, and then you can have a couple of reading lights that's dotted around your different surfaces, like on your side table, next to your sofa, or armchair, on a sideboard, on your bookshelf. And then you can also have a floor lamp or two, a couple of wall lights for some accent lighting. Another big mistake I see people make a lot is just to leave your walls white and bare. And architects love minimalism and simplicity, but I think having untreated bare white walls can be very boring and lifeless. To make a space feel more charming and lived in, it's always nice to have some wall decorations. You can start by just softening the walls and not painting it a stark white by painting instead like a light cream or pastel colors. Or you can add some big pieces of artwork, a gallery wall, wallpaper, moldings. There are so many different ways of adding a little bit of life and love into the living room. It's your home, let it express you. Don't let it be so dull and sad. So these are some of the mistakes I see people make again and again, myself included, because I haven't gotten around to correcting all of the things that annoy me in this apartment yet. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.